<laughs> so good evening, everyone. Nice to be here. And thank you very much to the scientific committee and to all the sponsors for this award. It's very valuable, believe me. They're very far, uh, very difficult to get hold of. So anyway, my um, subject is on um, uh, motor neuron disease. I'm a clinical researcher based at the Western Clinical School at Westmead. And I've been doing work into ALS uh, research for a period of time now. So we began with trying to study the motor cortex because there is a hypothesis that the disease begins in the brain rather than in the periphery. And we subscribe to that hypothesis. And we, we've studied the brain and found some changes in the brain which are quite predictive for a diagnosis of motor neuron disease. And this is a loss of um, excitability in the cortex. It's called, um, it's called a hyperexcitability. So there's loss of inhibition, basically, and perhaps an increase in facilitation. And um, this has helped, um, uh, helped us as a research protocol to diagnose ALS more early. So now the question is, why does this disease spread? And this is the interesting question we're trying to answer. Um, I have tried uh, one modality, which is again studying the motor cortex alone and studying it over different body areas, some of which may be affected at the time the person presents and some of which appear unaffected, to try and understand what happens. There have been um, problems with the motor cortex itself because uh, muscles waste and uh, the system gets uh, affected very early, especially the brain. So that's where the thought came about, how else can we study the brain? And uh, we have explored a few avenues earlier. So some of them are going to be completely new, and some of them have been tested earlier in small groups. And one of the modalities we will use is MRI to look at uh, not just the brain structure, but the connection between the various areas of the brain to understand what uh, are the changes in the connectomes, as we call it, the links between the different centers of the brain. And will changes in these uh, connections be the earliest uh, indicator of a problem? So there is a large number of controls that we need to study and patients. And the second uh, aspect, third, or rather this will be the third uh, modality that I'll use, in order to st understand progression of ALS. And that will be uh, a technique called TMS-EG, where you stimulate the brain using a magnetic field. But instead of recording over a muscle, you record over the brain itself. And then look at what happens with the potentials that are generated in other areas of the brain. So this might be another functional way of assessing the brain. And we hope that with um, studying it using these three modalities of transcranial magnetic stimulation, MRI, and uh, TMS EG, and studying a large number of controls to match the data, uh, we will be able to come up with the earliest changes that happen uh, in sporadic ALS and therefore have ways of understanding why the problem progresses and can we do something about it. So thank you very much once again for the Brain Foundation gift.